I'm going to show you guys my plums. There is my house. There is my plum tree. Plum tree. House. Yeah, it's taller than the house. That's my main sort of plum. There's heaps of these sort of plums around. But out here, I have a different kind. I think these ones are have a, a European or what, but that one there is not anything really. That's a fig tree. Hmm. That was just about looked like it had, had it. So I ended up um, going and um, trimming it back basically to the ground because I thought it was dead and then it would come back really good. And here's the other plums. Look at the size difference. I got a few of these. Now these plums, while I was away I think all the birds got them. I had so many last year I could eat myself sick with them. I had that many of them on that big tree. Now this one, some of the lovely plums it has. Last year, the kangaroo got all these. And I saw him, well I heard a bit of noise so I looked out the window and he was on them old roof sheets there which I've got to throw in scrap metal sometime. Um, and a couple of days later, all the plums are gone. I mean, they were like two days off being ripe, and they are all gone. <laughs> and then I saw this kangaroo crap on my driveway, full of plum seeds. So, um, yeah. That's the way she goes, uh, out in off-gridville. This idea that you're going to grow everything and get 100% crop perfectly every time, <laughs> that's a myth by rich greenies who live in the city. Um, it's not really the way it runs. <laughs> but you know, some years you get a good run, some years the birds eat them all, some years the kangaroos get them all, some years you get them all. <laughs>